So whenever two machines connected over a network want to talk to each other, they establish a TCP connection among them, right? But how would B understand what A wants, right? So there needs to be a common language that A and B both agrees on. For example, I am communicating in English, you are able to comprehend it. So you are able to understand what I'm talking about. So for example, if I specify a language, basically a protocol, which says that I would pass in a sentence called add space two space three followed by a slash n. When you see this, break it down by space. The first word is a command. The subsequent words are its arguments. So then you exactly know that when I get add space two space three slash n, you would know that you are requesting to add the numbers two and three and in the response you are supposed to send the result followed by a slash n so you send five slash n right so this is a protocol here we just defined a protocol that says that the everything will be space separated the first word will be the command the subsequent word will be the arguments and the response will be a single word followed by a slash n by the way this exactly is RESP, which is Redis Serialization Protocol version 1. Right? So when you want to set key in Redis, you do set key comma value or key space value, you pass in those arguments in this format. Right? Now, how is this related to HTTP? Here, the core idea is HTTP is also a protocol in which the specification says that your client will always initiate a TCP connection with the server and client will request for something and server will respond. So on this thing, it is established. So whenever client is requesting something, it should look like it should be able to convey what it is requesting for. So the format goes like this. The HTTP specification says that the first thing that you would pass in is the HTTP method, the verb, get, put, post, delete followed by a space, followed by the URL that you want, say, say slash foo, followed by a space, followed by the HTTP protocol, which is HTTP slash 1.1 followed by a slash R slash N. When you literally send this message over the TCP connection to the server, if the server is a web server, it would understand the HTTP protocol, which means it would understand this string that a client is requesting is firing a get method on this URL and the specification is 1.1 and server you would have the business logic on the server to understand what needs to be done in this case fetch this URL like either call the API the function that handles this URL in this case load the file from the disk send it back to the user or do some computation send it back to the user and you respond back right let's take a quick demo on how this actually looks like. So I have a very simple code written in Golang. I'm just I've just run my HTTP web server in the second uh, in the second terminal that you see. In the first one, what I'll do is I'll fire some HTTP request. We typically fire HTTP request as curl request. We fire curl space the URL and it makes a get request on that URL. We get the response, right? But we'll not be using curl. So let's first take a look on what my server looks like. So I have a function called slash foo. When I call slash foo, it literally just prints all the headers in it and writes bar as a response, right? So first let's see what curl response, curl space HTTP colon slash slash localhost colon 1729 on the method slash foo and in response I get bar, right? It's working fine, right? Now what do we do? Instead of doing this, what we want to do is we want to write the HTTP specification. So I would literally create a raw TCP connection, localhost 1729, literally a raw TCP connection from this terminal to my server. And now I want to fire the exact TCP message that we spoke about. The specification said the first thing would be the method. So I'm making a get request on slash foo followed by HTTP specification, HTTP slash 1.1 followed by a slash r slash n and at the end of message is one more new line, but it gave me an error. This error is, it looks very similar to an HTTP response, HTTP 1.1, 400 bad request, missing required host header. Now who is emitting this error? 
This error is emitted by the Golang's inbuilt HTTP server that I'm starting that it is requiring us to pass the host header. So we need to pass in that header. Now, how do we do that? In HTTP specification, when I want to pass in a header, so I just need to end it with 1729. I pass get space slash foo slash HTTP slash 1.1 enter and post which I have to pass in headers as key colon value. So it required me to pass the host header here. So I'll pass the host header host colon. I'll just pass anything. Let's say I pass localhost and I do enter enter and I got bar. It's looking like an HTTP response. HTTP 200 okay date this content length 3 content type text plain and I got bar in response. So I was able to fire over a raw TCP connection, a request with a get method on this URL with this protocol, host, localhost, enter, and it gave me a response, a genuine HTTP response. So if I open, and this is exactly the request that your browser sends. So if I open this URL in my browser, localhost colon 1729 slash foo, I would literally be seeing bar as a text there because a the browser knows how to render it. Right? Now this is how your get looks like. Now here we saw literally on a raw TCP connection what happened when I made a call. Now let's say we don't do get and all. Let's say I pass in random stuff. I pass in let's say foo bar a b c d. It's not protocol HTTP specification. Let's see what happens. Your browser or sorry your server was unable to interpret so it responded back bad request. Right? Because it is not the HTTP specification, so it's a bad request. Right? And again, it's a code which is written inside the default HTTP web server that is there. Right? That's why. Now, obviously, we are not just making a GET request, we also want to make POST request. So what POST specification says is, I have a function called slash login in which I pass in uh, the body and I just print login successful and I'm just printing the body over here. Right? So now let's look at how we send the body in the request. So I make the post space slash login space protocol 1.1 space header. It wanted the host header, the go HTTP web server wanted the host header. So we pass that, right? Then we hit enter. Then we hit one more enter. So what HTTP specification, HTTP specification says is after this one enter so that you distinguish that headers are complete and then you start to type body. But what happened? I hit enter and it emitted the response login successful. It did not give us a chance to pass body because the server does not know we were going to send the body. How would server know that it needs to wait for us to send the body? So which is where you see us passing the header content length. So post slash login space HTTP slash 1.1 enter host colon local host enter content content length is something. Let's say I pass in content length equal to 28. Right? And then what I would do is I would pass in the content length 28 and now it is waiting for me to pass the body and the body is let's I pass in user equal to arpit ampersand password equal to pass. I hope this is 28. I hit enter. I hit enter. It's It was not 28. It required me to pass in few more things. But you get it right and as soon as the 28 characters finished the 28 bytes finished as an input it responded me with login successful and on the right hand side you can see that it cop it captured the body that we wanted it to capture so body header content length value 28 body user equal to arpit password equal to pass right so this is the actual HTTP specification. The folks from the CS background would have studied in the networking course, but this is exactly what is happening over the TCP connection. So we are literally establishing a raw TCP connection and then passing the HTTP messages, messages formatted in the HTTP specification so that your server understands it. 
right and this was dead simple for us to implement now let's go like i wanted to cover a couple of more points which are of your interest like how do you write your own specific so what exactly is a protocol here so we saw that how body look like right and we added so we typically see another famous header called content type when we pass in content type as text plane or application slash json your server looking at that header understands that uh, whatever body I'm getting is of type plain text or is of type JSON and then it does its parsing and also our express framework does the parsing of it and creates a nice object for you, right? Or in Flask, you do request.json and you get that, right? That's what happens. So you can define your own protocol, like how HTTP is a specification. We spoke about RESP. Now, this is what your Redis's first specification was that whenever a client wanted to talk to Redis server, it had to establish the TCP connection and had to fire set space key space value and hit enter over there. Right? This was the protocol specific. Now it has changed. RESP v2 has come in, but this is how its initial protocol look like. Now you can write your own protocol. No one's stopping from you. Right? No one's stopping you from writing your own. It's just that it should be something that your client knows how to format. If let's say you want it to be supported by your browser, then your browser needs to know that, hey, this is how I want to format it and send. HTTP is a global standard that when you hit on the browser, www.facebook.com enter, that the browser is actually using the HTTP specification, crafting the message that I showed you. Sorry, first is establishes the connection with the server, facebook.com. Once the TCP connection is established, then it compiles the request as the HTTP specification message that we saw. It sends the message, the Facebook server receives the message, creates the response, emits the response to the client and client, if it is a browser, it would render it in the UI. So this is what is happening behind the scenes. Now, if you want to write your own protocol specification, either, so you need to write the client because it's not well adopted right now but it's a language that your server that your client is formatting the message in and the server is able to interpret the message like how i spoke about add space to space three that's your protocol you may choose to implement protocol however you want so if it is not globally accepted protocol then you have to write your own client which is why you see like databases having their own sdks for example you want to talk to mysql it has its own you have to install its driver or you have to install its package, what is it doing? You're firing SQL query, but how is that SQL query captured? How is that SQL query sent to the server, server understanding it, responding back, and how your client understands the response? This is what specification is. This is what protocol is, right? So you need to write a server that understands the protocol, client formats the message in that protocol and sends it to the server. So, so long as you are able to write the encoders and the decoders or the translators of it, or the process, like the specification of it that you are adhering to, others might not use it, but you are writing your own layer so that your client can talk to your server. HTTP is a global specification. That's why we see everybody using it, but you can choose to write your own. No one's stopping you, right? Similarly, you would have heard of HTTP 2, HTTP 3. These are different specifications built on top of it on how you are creating a message, sending it to the server, server interpreting it and doing what it requires it to do. Right? And this is very brief about the protocol specification. Now, when you hear the term protocol, don't be overwhelmed. Like, oh my God, what is these guys talking about? Protocol is just a way, just a common language, a common format that two machines understand and they talk to each other. Right? That's what protocol is. And yeah, this is all what I wanted to cover in this one. I hope you found it interesting. Hope you found it amusing. That's it for this one. I'll see you in the next one. Thanks a lot.